Hello, welcome everyone to KubeCon and to this session. I am Uma Mukara, CEO of Chaos Native, and I'm also a maintainer on the CNCF project Litmus Chaos. Along with me in this session, we have a co speaker, Summer Siddharth from Orange. Today, we'll be talking about a case study of um, Chaos Engineering Project Litmus at Orange, how they're using to improve the resilience of the overall Kubernetes-based platform. So we're going to talk uh, the first challenges in general about reliability uh, around Kubernetes uh, ecosystem today. And uh, I will be talking about how Litmus can help in incrementally tackling this challenge of reliability in Kubernetes and cloud native environments in general. And uh, Summer will talk through the challenges that they had seen uh, for reliability uh, in their Kubernetes environment and why they chose Litmus and how they're using Litmus. And of course, uh, he will be doing a detailed demo of a couple of scenarios. So let's talk about uh, the resilience in general. Uh, we all know that uh, cloud native is mainstream IT and uh, it's in deep adoption phase. So this also brings a couple of uh, challenges as far as the resilience or reliability in production or in use is concerned. The reason why uh, these challenges occur is there is proliferation of microservices. There are too many of them and they are shipping quite fast. They come to your environment faster than you would expect. So this, uh, even though they are all individually reliable, well-tested, when you all put together these microservices to form your application service, the dependency matrix increases a lot and any fault anywhere uh, really means that you may have a problem of availability in your service. So you need to be able to be resilient to all these faulty scenarios. That's really the reliability challenge. And the solution to this uh, bigger problem is adopt chaos engineering. And chaos engineering uh, has been on the rise for the last couple of years. We are seeing a lot of people using chaos engineering. Our project Litmus is an evidence to that. And we are expecting that uh, chaos engineering will be a mainstream uh, solution or a tool set uh, in the very near future. And uh, chaos engineering is being adopted for the overall DevOps, not just for ops, which is typically the case uh, in the last um, decade or so. But uh, now we see chaos engineering being used uh, both in pipelines, QA environments, uh, uh, reliability testing, test beds, all that stuff, performance engineering. So chaos engineering is emerging as a greater tool set for developers and DevOps in general. So the whole idea of chaos engineering is to cover the unexpected. So think that anything can go wrong and uh, you make sure that you test your system against all such possible failures and you reduce the chance of uh, downtime of your uh, service. And there are many tools available uh, in the industry, especially in the cloud native space. Um, they're easy to use. Uh, you can use them and put them to work and uh, reduce the possibility of um, downtimes um, at, at the production site, right? And how you do this is put uh, the chaos experiments together in various forms, chain them, build steady state hypothesis uh, closer to your reality and uh, go deeper, improvise your steady state hypothesis checks and, um, and then start fixing your uh, either configuration issues or software bugs or infrastructure um, uh, tuning to your service to be highly available. And uh, Litmus is born out of uh, clearly such a need and uh, it's uh, an open source project which is part of uh, CNCF for uh, uh, more than a year now and uh, we have developed uh, Litmus uh, 
uh, about three years ago and donated it to CNCFS Sandbox project uh, last year. Uh, we're doing um, the incubation process uh, right now. Hopefully, uh, we'll be an incubation project in the near future. It has got a quite a good adoption with uh, a thousand plus users and it's a pretty stable platform with 2.0 as the latest release and uh, we are seeing quite a good installation uh, rate of about 1,000 installations per day. It's a complete tool set uh, for anyone to do chaos engineering and it is a Kubernetes application and uh, it can run both Kubernetes targets, uh, attacks against Kubernetes targets and on Kubernetes as well. But it's a tool set for doing chaos engineering. And how it works is uh, uh, it has got a control plane uh, where uh, a set of team members uh, can uh, get together, collaborate, and uh, collaborate on tuning, developing, tuning the experiments. So together, uh, you develop a chaos workflow, which is nothing but a chaos scenario, and uh, you can target them onto your Kubernetes resources, Kubernetes platforms, app Kubernetes applications, and also uh, a bunch of non-Kubernetes use cases as well. Uh, it could be any cloud platforms or VMware or bare metal uh, physical infrastructure as well. So where do you use Litmus? Litmus, uh, first of all, has got uh, readily available chaos experiments to a large extent. And uh, for both Kubernetes as well as for non-Kubernetes such as VMware and other cloud platforms. So you just need to create chaos scenarios. You don't need to start from like uh, writing chaos experiments for the basic scenarios. So what you would be doing is really construct this chaos scenarios called Litmus workflows. And uh, Litmus also comes with a powerful feature called probes, uh, which is to help you in creating a steady state hypothesis logic. You introduce a fault, you want to know whether my system is still working as expected or not. That's a difficult uh, way to express, uh, is my system working properly or not? So Litmus probes uh, really come here to help you uh, to define uh, exactly that uh, problem. Declaratively, you can tune it, you can get it as close to as you would generally describe what your steady state hypothesis is. And then uh, you can use this entire end-to-end um, -end chaos engineering idea on uh, for multiple use cases. It could be continuous chaos testing or it could be uh, a random game days uh, to introduce chaos engineering into your system and also for uh, service level objective validation and management. And uh, you can also see if your observability systems are working well or do they need tuning, right? And uh, also in your scaling and performance testing, right? You can introduce chaos while you do the performance testing and see if your systems can retain. So how do you get started? Uh, as I said, we have got a bunch of experiments already available. These are like Lego blocks. You just need to put them together and you install Litmus through Helm and you get chaos center. Uh, you start running uh, your basic workflow, invite your team members and uh, attach it to your uh, Prometheus uh, Grafana monitoring system and everything is in place. So it's fairly easy to start. At the same time, it's highly scalable, a powerful SDK is there and uh, you can go uh, very deep describing your complex fault scenarios. So let's actually uh, go through the case study on how Orange is using uh, Litmus. So the environment uh, that they have is a large uh, OpenStack system, uh, which is now being moved uh, to being managed by Kubernetes. So it's a, a very large system and very critical system and Kubernetes has to manage that pretty well. And uh, the entire uh, challenge and uh, use case is uh, how can I ensure that my Kubernetes is uh, really reliable while managing um, this OpenStack uh, application or the services. So the solution is to really apply Litmus um, into that uh, Kubernetes system and uh, keep uh, executing uh, various uh, different experiments 
and uh, continue to uh, verify your uh, OpenStack continues to run and Kubernetes, uh, um, Kubernetes is uh, behaving as expected. So with that, let's welcome Summer. Uh, who will be uh, talking about uh, why Litmus and how, and he'll be uh, taking us through a quick demo. Hello, everyone. I'm Samar Siddharth and working as a lead software engineer in Orange, which is one of the leading telecom companies. And today I'm here to present a use case on improving resiliency of KTS applications. But before we begin, let's have a look at the complexity of Telco Infra in comparison with general IT Infra. Telco has a complex workload that is tightly coupled with hardware and there are many proprietary vendor applications running on it. In telco sector, migration to cloud native is happening at a rapid pace and many operators and vendors are embracing cloud native technologies. If you look at the complexity scale, telco infra requires to be highly secured as it is hosting user data and with the technology now moving towards 5G, it also requires ultra low latency and high throughput. Also, tech Telco apps have different requirements in terms of network and bandwidth, which requires acceleration techniques like SRIV, DPDK, CPU pinning. To add to these complexities, Telco Infra hosts different type of applications from domains like OSS, BSS, and it can be in form of a VNF or a CNF. Now let's talk about why do we need chaos and resiliency testing. As we all know that Kubernetes is a dynamic and a complex system, and there are a lot of Activities happening under the hood, which means Kubernetes component can interact in a number of unpredictable ways, causing emergent behavior. As deployment grows in size, so does the number of possible interaction between these components. And with the traditional testing, these scenarios are hard to uncover. In the real world scenarios, we have resources that are customized and required focus testing to cover these scenarios. Coming to the architecture of the system under test, here we are using two most widely used technologies, OpenStack and Kubernetes. As you can see in the diagram, Kubernetes is serving as an underlay for the OpenStack services, where one Kubernetes node is hosting the control plane services and the other node is an OpenStack compute host, which have compute related services running on it like Nova, Neutron, etc. So there are clear segregation of services based on the type of Kubernetes node. Additionally, if you see, we have applications like Vault for secret management, Envoy for enabling TLS communication. These are being used by OpenStack services and now it requires some additional testing so that we don't end up with a single point of failure with respect to integration of these application with OpenStack services. As we proceed, we will cover a few such scenarios in the demo. Let's see why Litmus comes into picture. Litmus is a chaos orchestration framework that focuses on Kubernetes workload and offers out of the box generic test cases that covers both Kubernetes workload and infrastructure. Example, pod delete and node CPU. Additionally, Litmus has a pro feature that enables to run customized validation and it is highly configurable wherein we can configure the time between the two probe executions and the particular instance where we want to execute the probe, like at the start of the chaos injection or during the chaos injection or towards the end of the chaos injection. This gives the required flexibility to run the validations. Also, it is easy to integrate with our existing automation framework. Litmus also has a great community support, which is really good for an open source project. Now in this slide, I will be covering another open source tool that is cross testing, which we have used to, for writing custom validations for Litmus probes. It is a very good framework for writing containerized test cases, which are highly reusable and easily integrated to CI CD chain. It also offers multiple drivers for writing test cases like Python unit test, bash, and robot framework. So towards the bottom of the screen, you see a sample output from the cross testing, uh, cross testing test case, which includes list of test cases along with projects to which these test cases belong and the tier of the test cases like health check. It also, con it also contains the duration of each test case along with the final verdict of each test case. So in this slide, I'm going to cover the cross-testing workflow. We start with the identification of application 
which is called application under test. This is identified in Kubernetes based on the labels and selectors. Then we move on to the pre-validation step, wherein we perform pre-validation checks using litmus probes and cross-testing, which are going to which we are going to see in the demo. Next, we move on to the kiosk injection phase, wherein we inject the kiosk to, ident to the identified application and also run the on kiosk probe. So basically, we are going to check the functionality of the application using litmus probe at the time when the application is under stress. And finally, the post validation step. So apart from the validating the final state of the application, it should be up and running as it was during the start of the experiment. We can also have some additional post validation probes that can perform the custom post check for the application along with the other actions like cleanup of the resources that were created during the pre-validation steps. Coming to the use cases, resiliency realizes the motto of this KubeCon. And as you see that resiliency is also at the center of our use cases. We can utilize the open source tools for building chaos and resilience test cases around KTS workload and infra. What you can see here are the different scenarios such as validating resiliency of the containerized control plane. We can also use this to simulate issues and works that come in production and fix it properly in the pre-prod or development stages, as it can be simulated easily through automation. Next, we can improve the monitoring and alerting system based on the observations of the chaos experiment by timely and meaningful alerts. We can also use this for validating HA of different control plane services as we are integrating additional applications like Vault, Envoy, and others to the existing control plane services. It can also be used for end-to-end -end automation and testing interdependencies among different applications. So in the first use case, we will be targeting a Vault application pod so in this experiment the scenario is we will delete the vault application pod that is deployed in ha that is we have three vault application pods running so you can see it here so i'll just quickly go through the chaos engine experiment file so if we see that we have the application identifier here, that is the label of the vault pod. And if we go down below, so I'll cover the important parts. So if we go below, we have the probe section wherein we have the first probe, which is related to unsealing of the vault. So that is basically done uh, once all the vaults go into sealed state. So it becomes unserviceable. So we'll have to unseal it once we uh, delete or uh, restart all the vault pods. So it automatically goes into seal state. So it has to be sealed uh, manually. So first is the unseal vault probe, which is running at the EOT, that is end of the test. And the second probe is a check front end access. So this is basically checking, checking the access of the vault endpoint and this is running in the mode edge, so which means that it would run at the starting of the experiment and towards the end of the experiment. And as you can see, there are different parameters which are self-explanatory, which covers the uh, gap between the two probes or the timeout parameter for the probes. Similarly, if we go towards the end, so here we have set pod effect percentage as 100 and the sequence as parallel. So it will delete all the pods parallelly. I'm applying this uh, Chaos Engine manifest. As soon as I apply, we can see that the litmus pod is getting created that is driving this experiment. So if we go to the logs, So we can see that the first probe is passed, that it was able to get 200 response code from the vault endpoint. And similarly, we can see as per the chaos engine, all the pods are getting deleted at the same time. So by now our vault is in a sealed state and 
it has to be unsealed towards the end of the experiment so which is been taken care by the unseal vault probe So now the unsteel vault probe has started, and we are towards the end of the experiment, so it will take some time to execute. So now <clears throat> the EOT probe that is towards the end of the experiment, it is completed, and we have passed all the probes. So as you can see in the chaos result, we see that. our experiment is passed the final verdict is passed and we can also see the status of different probes and probes pass probe pass percentage as well so this is 100% and status of different probes is also good so since we have this check you front end url probe as uh, edge so it was first checked at the beginning of the experiment and towards the end and uh, the unseal part was only towards the end so it is the post chaos probe moving to the next experiment it is again related to vault but with a slight difference in this we will be deleting the vault pod serially instead of parallelly which means that a single pod will be deleted at a time and we can see if the failover is happening properly or not so the vault url or the end point should be reachable till the time all the pod all the vault pods go into a sealed state so in this case we will see a failure scenario where uh, all the pods get sealed and the url validation will be failed uh, towards the end so that is expected and uh, for this reason we have uh, configured the vault probe to proceed on failure so we'll still continue with the experiment and unseal the vault towards the end rather than failing and exiting so this is also an option we can fail the experiment in case a probe uh, probe fails and exit it so i'll quickly go through the chaos engine manifest for this one also again same label and in this case the only difference that we can see is the check front end access url is in continuous mode which means that it would be tested from starting till end so uh, basically it would check at the start of the experiment if it is accessible and during the chaos injection phase and towards the end so towards the end it would fail since we'll be deleting all the pods sequentially so it will pass for uh, two pods so and towards the end when the third pod is deleted so which means that all the pods go into a sealed state and uh, the end point is now no more serviceable so the sequence we have selected here is serial so the probe has passed and we are deleting vault 1 so this has already been deleted and it has uh, recovered similarly we will cover vault 0 and vault 2 so now vault 2 is deleted so it is continuously pulling the vault url the end point and we will see a failure towards the end when the last vault pod is deleted so i have intentionally added a 30 second delay between uh, consecutive chaos injections so that the pod can recover so yeah so now the connection has lost as soon as we deleted the vault 0 pod so now the probe has started to fail and finally it will mark this probe as failed and proceed with the final uh, probe execution that is unsealing of the vault since all the application is up and running all the pods are up and running so it proceeded and it failed the front end access url pod which was expected since all the pods went into sealed state during the continuous probe evaluation 
and now it's running the unseal vault probe so now we can see that the final probe has completed successfully and it has unsealed the vault but the overall result is a fail because the probe that was validating the url failed towards the end so we can check this in the end as well so i'll just so in this result chaos result we can see that it was failed during running the probe and the probe success percentage is 50 since it was able to pass at the uh, beginning but was not able to pass towards the end so it was partially successful so that's why the success percentage is 50 and uh, it also lists which the which probe got failed so this is the check front end access url probe that got failed So moving on to the reuse case where we are going to target one of the OpenStack service that is Nova Scheduler. Quickly going through the Kiosk Engine manifest for Nova Scheduler. So here we are identifying the application by the namespace and by the label of Nova Scheduler. Here we have three uh, probes that are running out of which two are running on Kiosk and the last one is running towards the end of the test case so the first on chaos probe is create resources which is basically creating open stack resources at the time of chaos injection and similarly we have uh, check ping which is checking the uh, reachability of the vm created during the create resource so here we have adjusted with the timing so since there's some time that is taken to create the resource so this uh, probe would get uh, triggered after a delay of certain amount that is 180 seconds and similarly towards the end we are uh, running another probe that is cleaning up all the resources so here the pod effect percentage is 20 which means that uh, a single pod would be targeted at a time since we have four pods uh, that are running in an HA mode so these are the pods I'll quickly apply this manifest file to start the experiment. Let's follow the logs for this part. so this this is the first part that is getting deleted so since we have uh, selected uh, the selection of the pod random so it will uh, select any pod randomly and delete it and would continue to do that till the total chaos duration is completed and we'll be waiting for 30 seconds between every chaos injections so that we get time uh, for the previous pod to recover So this we can see that the uh, resources are getting created. And here we can see that randomly a pod is getting deleted. So the first one was this one based on the uptime. So now this is the one that was deleted last. So we have kept multiple iteration of this cross injection for Nova scheduler pod so that we make sure that it is overlapping with the on chaos probes. So we want to make sure that the resources that are being created is overlapping with the chaos injection time so that we can actually uh, test 
the availability of the services toward to the end user if uh, there is any degradation of the services or any impact in creation of the open stack resources with respect to the nova scheduler pods so this is the log of the cross testing container that created the services so this has passed and now it has proceeded to the second on chaos flow that is checking the connectivity of the vm that was created so one thing that needs to be taken care here is uh, aligning the timing of the chaos experiment so we do have options of aligning the time uh, between the probe running of the probe and the chaos injection so that has to be taken care so now the connectivity check has also passed so the there was no uh, packet loss observed hundred and the final verdict is also passed all the proofs passed without any issues so uh, we can now say that the uh, nova scheduler is resilient to pod uh, delete experiment this is a sample output of the cross testing based probe containers so uh, resource validator is basically the one that created the resources checking was a connectivity check resource deletion was the clean up part and this is a another probe with which we used to run the ensemble roles and uh, take corrective actions during the chaos injection phase or post chaos injection phase similarly this is the litmus result which i just showed you and which captures all the details and makes it easily integratable with the ci cd chain so that's all from the demo perspective uh, thank you all thank you for your time and thank you for joining this uh, demo welcome back i uh, hope you liked the demo by summer where he actually showed two scenarios uh, by injecting chaos into his uh, running OpenStack system, and he was able to verify uh, that the system continues to function, uh, and he was able to check um, the steady state hypothesis at uh, various instances using litmus probes. So the summary uh, is uh, you will be able to do deep chaos and you should be doing deep chaos uh, in an operating environment uh, to validate uh, the functioning of your application, the functioning of your Kubernetes and uh, Summer and his team at Orange is able to do that successfully and I hope uh, you'll be able to do something similar uh, if your needs are similar use litmus uh, for your reliability needs you can get started with um, docs uh, of litmus at docs.litmuschaos.io and uh, if you need any help with litmus uh, we will be available at the litmus channel on kubernetes slack community and uh, with that uh, thank you very much folks you all have a great kubecon cheers <laughs>